This meeting is now called to order. Would you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic, republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May we have a roll call, please? Mr. Corman. Here. Mr. Prince. Here. Mr. Person. Here. Ms. Witchie. Here. Mr. McIrvin. Here. Ms. Perez. Here. Mr. Pavoni. Here. Roll call, Mr. Mayor, all present. Thank you, Jason. First item on the agenda, we have the pleasure of having Kim Henry here from the Washington State Department of Transportation. Access that now. Is that working for you? Yeah, is this one working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Mayor Law and, and members of the, uh, the council, thank you for having us back again today. And uh, I think uh, we have the opportunity to, to share some uh, good news on a couple of fronts. So I want to talk about those today. And uh, with me is uh, Morgan Bailo. He's an assistant uh, traffic engineer for the Northwest region here. Um, and uh, he's uh, really here to speak about uh, some of the, the ramp metering things that, that are going on here that I know is of concern with everybody. So um, we want to talk about uh, particularly um, what's, uh, what's changed since last time I was here with 44th and, and what's going on there. Um, also, there's been some changes uh, from the last report on the 405167 direct connector project. I uh, want to talk a little bit about um, uh, then uh, ultimate improvements at uh, 44th Street area and how that might fit in with some of the ST3 plans for the future. And then also just want to give everybody a heads up on other things that are going on in the region here with some I-5 pavement rehab uh, project that's going on this summer. So I'll just turn this over to Morgan and he can uh, talk about what's going on with ramp metering. Great. <coughs> it's great to be here. I've never been here before, so I appreciate you having me here. Well, welcome. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Thank you. So I know ramp meters are one of the things that people you know, have a love-hate relationship with, but ramp meters have been around since the 60s and over half of the states in the country use them and they use them to reduce collisions and to uh, improve speeds through the corridors and to you know, reduce emissions. So they've, they've been effective, but certainly nothing is perfect and no system that I operate is perfect. Uh, so uh, uh, Greg Zimmerman <coughs> and Doug Jacobson, uh, they contacted us a while ago and with some concerns and they brought forward some good ideas, some ideas that we worked with them on. And so I'd like to appreciate or thank them for being there. Even Doug came, even after he's been retired for how long? <laughs> <laughs> so, Welcome back, Doug. He, he wanted me to be here, so he must have came just, just for me. It didn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> so, but they brought some good ideas, and we've heard, uh, and Kim heard from uh, you all uh, last time that he was here on the importance of some of this work. So, uh, you know, Kim uh, found uh, money in his budget to move forward with uh, two of these projects which I'm just going to go through real quickly uh, the first one is uh, Northeast 30th Street to northbound 405 so what we've uh, worked with the city to do is to widen the on-ramp of northbound I-405 and add an additional lane right now it's, it's a one lane meter uh, with an HOV bypass and we're going to uh, widen uh, that so that we have a two-lane meter effectively doubling the capacity for storage at that ramp uh, to do this we're going to have to build a retaining wall because uh, of, of the some of the slope there and we have to upgrade the ramp meet the ramp meter equipment and right now there's an HOV bypass and a flyer stop on this ramp and the new layout uh, would bring we couldn't build put an HOV lane into that ramp because of the flyer stop because it would would route traffic into the flyer stop. So what we plan to do there is to do a, uh, a bus only shoulder 
so the shoulder will be open for buses to drive on, but we can't have HOVs driving through the flyer stop, so we weren't able to do that. So this is our, our first project, and there's a con contract ad date in July, so that's coming real quickly. Uh, so some impro you should see improvements soon. And uh, the award will be in August, and we hope to have it done this fall, hopefully before it gets dark and wet <clears throat> and things get really tough out there. Okay, can I stop you? I, I First of all, I want to say I really appreciate that you're doing this, but I am kind of nervous about that one point that you just made. So so the HOV bypass is going to go away for? Yeah, the HOV that? bypass. Uh, we have a flyer stop on the shoulder and an HOV bypass. And in order to uh, keep the flyer stop open and not have uh, carpools pull into the flyer stop in order to get down on the shoulder, we had to restrict that from the carpools. So the everything should still operate well uh, with the uh, with the system the way that it is. Okay. So we're trying to promote buses and the bus usage and definitely keep the flyer stop open. That's a real major concern to us. But but uh, just to make sure I understand, two two person carpools will st will then have to have to wait in the queue. That's correct. Okay. And so the, the second project that uh, we've been working on and it's, we're moving forward with is the uh, Northeast 44th Street to northbound 405. And what we plan to do is, there's no HOV bypass at this ramp, what we plan to do is restripe the ramp and relocate the ramp meter further downstream. And uh, effectively this will give us about four times the storage that we have there now. And we have a double lane meter. And this is a, an interim solution because this interchange is going to be rebuilt uh, with the widening project that's coming through. And this is tied to the, uh, the contract with 30th. So this is going to come out as one, uh, one contract and one improvement. And the last ramp, pro uh, last ramp project I want to talk about was proposed to us by the city. And so the idea, uh, because of congestion <coughs> on SR-169, the idea is to make a double uh, left turn uh, from westbound SR-169 to southbound I-405. And so to do this, uh, we would need to do some uh, uh, striping and channelization changes, uh, changes to the traffic signal. We would need to widen the south leg of the intersection in order to be able to fit two lanes of traffic and create a radius through there. And we would have to reconfigure the, uh, the on-ramp uh, from uh, a two-lane meter with an HOV bypass to a three-lane ramp meter. So uh, again, we're, what we're doing in order to accommodate this is we're taking one of the lanes in the left turn and it's turning into an HOV lane. And so the HOV lane, there isn't time to get everybody out and push them over. <coughs> It'll cause a lot of conflict. And so unfortunately here too, we have to take the HOV lane. So what we're going to do in order to keep the same amount of uh, traffic flow onto the freeway is to uh, put a triple lane ramp meter. So there'll be three lanes and they'll be, all will be metered. And so this is a, a project we've been working with city staff on and, and we agree that it's a good project and uh, that uh, agree to work with the city as the city pursues funding and works on design and construction moves forward with this project. So those are the three ramp meter projects that we've been working on and we're pretty excited about. There's challenges in all of this work, but we think these will make an improvement out there. Well, I can tell you, we appreciate you doing this very much. Um, and, and I know we're gonna have a ton of citizens that are very pleased about it. I'm sure that it's gonna make a big difference on the significant backups that we're experiencing now. At the North 30th, when I was thinking about Randy, you can't get an HOV two person up there anyway because mm -hmm. you're gridlocked on both yeah. ends. Yeah, you know, I, you're you're right. You yeah. have to go through three quarters of a mile of yeah. backup to get there. So, so uh, recognize that. Uh, we appreciate all three of those very much. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about um, the, the bigger project and what we're doing there. And um, I think, you know, this is also going <clears> to <throat> change things here in, in the city an awful lot. 
um, when we add capacity in, in to the freeway system and the freeway starts moving better, I think that's really going to address uh, an awful lot of the, the ramp backups that, that we've been having here. And so I think um, a lot of these things that we're doing right now are to address the immediate problem, but more capacity on the freeway is really what's needed to address the, the bigger problem. And so um, with that, we have um, the, the project between Renton to Bellevue that is moving forward. Um, and I talked about uh, the 405167 direct connector as the first phase of that project last time. And we were in the process of evaluating proposals. Um, so we've uh, opened uh, bids since that time and um, we're ready to move forward with that project. And that's the top line up there. Uh, that project, <coughs> we actually have proposals back in, uh, from the, the contractors and the apparent best value shows that project being completed in uh, the middle of 2019 and that lines up uh, almost perfectly with the beginning of construction for the major widening work and so uh, I think those two projects are going to really dovetail here fairly nicely and we start moving forward with that. Um, so uh, the, the project uh, was apparent best value was uh, Guy F. Atkinson uh, Construction. Um, they are, uh, their main offices are, are here in Renton. Uh, they are a, a contractor with a lot of 405 experience and they have a lot of design build experience which is the contracting method that uh, we work with. And so uh, we're very pleased and I, I think the, the city's going to be pleased as well as we get going with uh, this uh, particular contract. Um, we, one of the things with design build is we put together a contract that has goals for the contractor and then we evaluate their proposal based on how they fulfill those goals. Um, one of the uh, main goals that we really had was to minimize impacts to neighborhoods and we asked them to tell us how they were going to do that. Um, so they came back with uh, their proposal was to we're going to be reusing the noise wall that we built in the last contract on the rent stage two through there and we're going to simply be moving it up the hill. And they're going to make that a first item of work. Uh, they plan to complete that in the July-August time frame of next year before the major work gets going so that uh, the neighborhoods will have a noise wall in place before we actually get out there with uh, the, <coughs> the heavy work. So that's one thing that we're going to be doing to uh, uh, help with minimizing the, uh, some of the impacts to the neighborhood. The other thing we said was we wanted to minimize uh, impacts from traffic. How do we keep traffic flowing. Uh, so they put a, a, a lot of thought into that and they actually did very well in terms of um, trying to minimize uh, the number of closures and trying to balance the, the daytime work versus no, nighttime work. Nighttime work obviously has less impacts on traffic but then it has more of a community impact with noise and whatnot. So um, they, they really uh, paid a lot of attention to that in terms of how they're shifting traffic so they can work behind uh, protected work zones during the day as much a, as possible and so um, they actually had a, just a, a very good proposal that we were pleased to, to see with that. Um, something else that um, I know is important to the city is the landscaping out here on the, the hill just outside of City Hall. Uh, first time around uh, did not go particularly well. It's a tough environment um, to get things to grow in out there and so um, we asked uh, the contractor as part of the uh, minimizing impacts and to, to move forward with that part of the work early and they've committed to doing that in March of next year um, in the planting season. So uh, hopefully we'll get a, a, a little better look going out there next spring um, instead of some of the, the dried grasses that, that we're seeing out there right now. So I, I think that's going to be a, a benefit for, for the city as well. <clears throat> Um, this project, of course, links together with uh, the bigger widening project to create this uh, connection between uh, Highway 167 and downtown Bellevue. Um, and we're still moving along on the same schedule. But one of the things out of this particular piece that's maybe a, a little bit of new news is uh, discussions as it, as it relates to what's happening at uh, 44th Street. Um, Sound Transit, in their proposal for the ST3, has come back with uh, a, a transit stop at 44th and so there's a couple of different options that we uh, are, are looking at um, and the one on the left is uh, an inline transit station at 128th in Totem Lake. 
The ramps come up to the arterial in the center there. And then, um, as you can see on the, the right hand, upper right hand corner picture there, uh, is where there's a, a, a transit stop on the ramp itself. And so buses come up, drop uh, the, the riders there, and then they come right back down onto the freeway. Um, the other type is the type that you see there in the, the bottom right, that's uh, Montlake Terrace, and that's an inline flyer stop. And so uh, the buses stop in the center of the freeway there. Uh, passengers walk from the, the transit station right across the street, across the pedestrian bridge, and then access uh, transit uh, buses from there. Um, so those are two different approaches. Um, with uh, some of the concerns uh, about um, um, the backups that we see from ramp metering, uh, we, we tend to think that uh, the one on the left is one that really provides more options for citizens here. Um, our modeling is, is uh, showing about 30 percent of the riders really want to get on at uh, the direct access so they don't have to wait in that, that queue from the ramp meter, which reduces any of the backups that you're going to see. The more access you can get into the express toll lanes and avoid uh, um, the ramp meters, Really, I think it's it's the it's better for everybody. So, this is uh, an alternative that that we want to work with city staff on and talk about more here and and see uh, really which one makes the most mm -hmm. sense. But it, it just from a, a traffic numbers viewpoint, looking at it, we tend to think that the the one on the left is the one that provides the best overall uh, service for the area. Um, something that I wanted to talk about, just mention here that's outside of the 405 area, and, and I don't do that very often, but um, this is a, a, a big enough uh, issue here for everybody in the, in the south area that I just wanted to bring it up. Um, we are rehabilitating uh, concrete pavement in the uh, southbound direction. It covers almost 13 miles of I-5, and so there are going to be a lot of upcoming uh, lane restrictions uh, this summer. So just wanted to, to note that for everybody that uh, there's a number of weekends where we're going to be down to two lanes in that southbound direction. Uh, and uh, we have uh, the information up here just to, to make everybody aware of that. Um, unfortunately, all of our old pavement is, is really getting to the point where we have to do a lot of replacement. And so uh, we did that uh, a lot of work this summer and up uh, in Snohomish County. And now it's down in uh, South King County. And then starting next year, it'll be downtown Seattle as we continue to, to work on uh, aging pavement and expansion joints. Any questions for either Morgan or myself? Any questions from council? I guess not, but uh, I, I do. I do want to say thank you again, um, Kim, very much, and Morgan for for being here tonight, um, because uh, we, that's been a big issue. Particularly, the meters have been a big issue with our citizens, and I know that a lot of traffic coming out of Maple Valley and east of town coming on the Maple Valley Highway are going to really appreciate being able to get on to 405 a lot easier with those changes that you're proposing. So uh, again, just thank you very much for your responsiveness. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for having Thanks. us. Okay. Thank you. Okay, moving on to administrative report, Mr. Covington. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, a couple of items and uh, this one for our public as well. I want to let folks know that the First ever second Tuesday food trucks uh, will debut tomorrow at a farmer's market. Uh, three to four popular food trucks over to market um, will be there every Tuesday uh, in June, July, August, and September. In addition to the food trucks, uh, shoppers can enjoy live music, tips from our master gardeners, cooking demonstrations, children's <coughs> activities, and of course, all the fresh local foods you would expect. We've got a number of um, traffic uh, advisories as we continue to do work throughout the city on, on streets. Um, uh, the, this week we'll be in the Lake Washington Boulevard area just north of Hauser Way uh, doing some storm drain installation so there'll be some uh, single lane closures. Um, Maine continues to uh, be in the middle of construction there so that's uh, there's some lanes uh, that are closed there. Um, uh, this week, uh, the uh, area around Ikea, 41st Street, 43rd, and Lind uh, will be, there'll be some lane closure due to some utility installations as part of that development. Um, 
uh, intermittent lane closures um, on uh, Rainier Avenue between 7th and Victoria Street for some fiber optic line replacement. And uh, tomorrow, the I mentioned this last week, we're closing the uh, North 3rd and North 4th Streets uh, between Logan Avenue North and Burnett Avenue uh, for paving as we continue to be, get closer and closer to the end of that Logan Avenue uh, uh, rehabilitation and reconstruction. <clears throat> uh, we're doing those, uh, those uh, streets that access Logan. Um, this week, we'll also be doing some... Uh, uh, curb lane improvements along Maple Valley Highway, so you'll see um, some barricades out and some cones. People just need to be aware of that as they move about that major state route. And um, some repaving on Talbot Road just around the hospital area and uh, further north. Um, that is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thanks, Mr. Covington. Next is audience comment. I have one person signed up to address the council. Uh, Mr. Knedlock, you have five minutes. Please give your name, city of residence, for the record. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council President, Honorable Council Members, my name is Will Knedlik. My address is Box 99, Kirkland 98083. I am the, appearing as the Secretary of the Eastside Transportation Association to continue our Sound Transit 3 dialogue uh, with you that was started with respect to BRT on I-405. First, I want to thank this city for taking the lead on ST3 input for itself and for East King County and for South King County, I think that it's definitely had an impact on the deliberative process by the Sound Transit Board, and there's no city that's uh, taken a more effective lead than this one. Uh, the second thing is, is that the Eastside Transportation Partnership met last Friday and had a very uh, difficult conversation in many ways uh, with regard to a couple of Sound Transit 3 issues. And uh, a great deal of sanity was inserted into kind of a contentious process by council member person. And uh, I want to thank you for uh, him having uh, made sure that a difficult conversation was a productive conversation. Uh, it was also nice to see him quoted in the Seattle Times today. Uh, the Eastside Transportation Association wants to ask this city to further take the lead uh, with regard to two specific requirements uh, for your citizens to have a full understanding of the ST3 process with which you have been so much involved. And indeed, uh, I would suggest to you that uh, on behalf of ETA that it would be appropriate for you to consider actually conditioning your a willingness to consider uh, support for ST3 on these two things which are outlined in the last two paragraphs of the letter I've provided to you tonight. The first one is your citizens along with all other citizens deserve and need completely honest numbers that are readily accessible uh, through a mechanism that I've suggested should be an online calculator. And that would include when and how much the partial, toll, partial tax rollback that has been promised twice before by Sound Transit to your citizens and will be promised a third time as part of ST3 would kick in and how much that would reduce taxes uh, if Sound Transit 3 was to be defeated and how much it would reduce taxes if Sound Transit 3 was to be approved. Uh, the uh, S Sound Transit staff was somewhat unfairly asked at the ETP on Friday uh, if they would provide an online calculator that would allow your citizens to plug in their property taxes, their sales taxes, and the number of cars and trailers and boats and, and uh, motorcycles and trucks they have so as to calculate for their residents what the tax would be. And uh, understandably, the staff uh, wasn't prepared for that question, and, and they were reticent to say that they would. I think that they will, because it's the right thing for them to do. But I think they especially will if you take the lead in encouraging them to do so. Uh, if they don't, 
uh, a beta version of an online calculator has been prepared and will allow the citizens to do, uh, make those calculations for themselves. And it will also allow them to select whether or not they believe the average household cost, average household cost will be $400 a year or $2,280 a year for reasons that are outlined on the three, uh, final three pages of my submission. Uh, my submission S simply uses the current rate of tax growth and extrapolates it out 25 years. I think there's a good reason for doing so, and that is that the uh, changes that are be being made in the overall economy by Amazon is what's very much driving tax growth in the Seattle North King County sub area, and it's likely to continue because it looks to me like Amazon may have a 20 year run. But those are optimistic estimates. But those optimistic estimates, as you will see, uh, provide for an average household cost per year of $2,280 rather than the $400 that is being represented by Sound Transit. Since Sound Transit will collect $660 on average this year, 2016, for reasons also indicated, uh, I think you have reason to wonder whether or not the average will be $400. Uh, uh, starting next year. But we need to start the dialogue and I hope you'll take the lead. The second thing is, and this is in the last paragraph of the later letter, we need an objective way to assign sub-area costs. And the ORCA card actually provides it. This isn't 1996 anymore. We can measure the actual use of people from Renton for every part of the system and we can assign the, the costs that are allocated to the South King County sub area and the East King County sub area based on that actual usage. Peter Rogoff has suggested this with regard to the second downtown, uh, second downtown Seattle transit tunnel. But there's no reason not to do this for everything. We no longer need to, re to rely on the subjective uh, assignment of values by the Sound Transit Board for political reasons. We can assign them scientifically based on actual usage. And I would urge you to condition your willingness to support Sound Transit 3 on giving the taxpayers of your jurisdiction their rightful due. If they use it, we ought to pay for it. If Seattle's using 80% of it, we shouldn't be paying 25% of it because we're in the East King County sub area, which is what happens now. So I hope to be able to continue this dialogue with you. I, I'm so grateful for the leadership that you've <clears throat> shown. Uh, and I think that we can have an ST3 tax package that is honest for the citizens, whatever side you're on. I think it's a terrible plan. Some of you think it's a great plan. That doesn't really matter. The taxpayers deserve to know the facts, and they'll make the decision for us, and they will be right, just as they were with Proposition 1. Thank you so much. You bet. Thank you. Council, we don't object. Uh, Mr. McKinnett drove, drove all the way down here from Kirkland, so I thought it was okay to extend the yeah. audience comment and, time. And Mr. Mm -hmm. Mayor? Yes. Mr. Yeah, I, I appreciate you doing that. And I wanted to say I, I, I appreciate your comments, Mr. Knedlik, and uh, especially I, I think the comment about having an online calculator makes a lot of sense. I, I think we, we've uh, recognized that in our city before when we've had uh, propositions. We like to have a way that... Um, that the voters can compute how much it's going to cost them and, and I mean I, I for one think that's a really good suggestion especially something like this it has sort of three three different taxation elements for the typical household um, the least that people can expect is to be able to figure out how much it's going to cost so thank you for that well thank you and thank you for the extension of courtesy I spoke with the county assessor today he's going to let us plug right into his tax base and we're going to work on a proxy for renters so Great. I think it can be excellent thank okay. you thank you Okay, moving on to the consent agenda. We have eight items for council consideration. Are there any items a council member would like pulled for discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Prince. I'd like to remove item 6C and 6D. C and D? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Carmen. I move approval of the consent agenda minus items C and D. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Corman, second by Mr. Pavoni, that council concur with the consent agenda, minus items C and D. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. These items are both part of our joint choice, our choice neighborhood grant uh, project. Um, and I'd just like to make them go council concur instead of coming through committee um, and have the resolutions for such presented at our next council meeting next week. 
Second. Second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Print, second by Mr. Pavoni that uh, items uh, 6C and D be moved to council concur and, uh, and the first ordinance be read at the next council meeting. Yes, sir. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Moving on to unfinished business, Mr. Corman. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor, and just as a point of order, is there is that all we need to do on those items, or we moved them to council concur? Is that assumed then that we're also approving those items? Um, yes. Okay. The city attorney's all right. Okay. Good. All right. Just wanted to make sure we did that right. Um, and uh, unfinished business. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have a <coughs> committee of the whole report to present. Committee of the Whole Committee Report, Regional Fire Authority Agreements and Legislation. The Committee of the Whole recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the ordinance adding Chapter 221 RMC Renton Regional Fire Authority and Fire Department in order to acknowledge the Renton Regional Fire Authority, designate the Department and Fire Chief, and create a framework for filling the city's three positions on the Renton Regional Fire Authority Governing Board. The committee further recommends that the ordinance regarding this matter be presented for first reading. This is signed by the council president. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Corman. Move the council concur in the committee report. Second. Move by Mr. Corman, second by Mr. Pavoni. The council concur with the committee of the whole report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Prince. No unfinished business, Mr. Okay, Mayor. Mr. Person. <clears throat> Yes, Mr. Mayor, the Finance Committee has been busy again. Yes, you have. <laughs> okay. uh, the first Finance Committee report is approval of claims and payroll vouchers. The Finance Committee approves for payment on June 13, 2016, claims vouchers 347-373 through 347-698, three wire transfers and one payroll run with benefit withholding payments totaling $3,465,383.49. And payroll vouchers, including 754 direct deposits and 50 payroll checks, totaling $1,606,084.84. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the council concur with the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Pavoni. The council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay, the next finance committee committee reports regarding the 2016 Renton Farmers Market uh, King Conservation Grant Marketing and Promotion. The finance committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to authorize the mayor and city clerk to enter into the interlocal agreement with King Conservation District to accept $10,500 in grant funds with spending authority for the 2016 Renton Farmers Market. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. We always love to accept money. We sure do. <laughs> and and the, uh, they're going to use this $10,000 for the farmer's market for some programs, like bringing Cisco Morris and another famous chef. And it's a, just a fantastic thing <clears throat> that will be happening at the market. So with that, I move the council concur with the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Pavoni. The council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, the final uh, Finance Committee report is regarding the sunset revitalization latecomers area boundaries and assessment methodology. The Finance Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the resolution establishing the boundaries and latecomers assessment methodology for the sunset revitalization latecomers agreement or area, I'm sorry. Uh, the committee further recommends that the resolution regarding this matter be presented for reading and adoption. Signed by the Finance Committee Chair and members. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. I move the council concur with the recommendation of the Finance Committee. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, second by Mr. Pavoni, that council concur with the Finance Committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you. Ms. Witchie. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I have two Community Services Committee reports. Okay, the first Community Services Committee uh, Committee report is regarding 2016 Neighborhood Project Grants. The Community Services Committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to approve the two 2016 Neighborhood Project Grants and authorize expenditures in the amount of $3,841.74 
from the budgeted 2016 neighborhood program fund. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Witchie. I move that the council concur the findings of the community services committee. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Witchie. Second by Mr. Prince. The council concur with the community services committee report. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, the final community services committee report is regarding the Maplewood Golf Course organizational change. The community services committee recommends concurrence in the staff recommendation to authorize the community services golf course division to implement the reorganizational change and utilize the approved funds from the 404 enterprise fund to cover the salary and benefits increase. This is signed by the committee chair and members. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Ms. Witchie. I move that the council concur the recommendation of the community services committee. Second. It's been moved by Ms. Witchie, seconded by Mr. Prince, that council concur with the community services committee report. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. That's it. Okay, Mr. Mr. McIrvin. Uh, no unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Ms. Perez. No unfinished business, Mr. Mayor. Okay, Mr. Pavoni. Yes, Mr. Mayor, the report adopting the 2015 International Fire Code is still in committee at this time. Okay. That is all, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. So moving on to legislation, we have one resolution and two ordinances this evening. <clears throat> okay, the resol resolution is regarding the Sunset uh, Revitalization Latecomers Area. A resolution of the City of Renton, Washington, establishing the boundaries and latecomers assessment methodology for the Sunset Revitalization Latecomers Area. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Person. Move we adopt the resolution as read. Second. It's been moved by Mr. Person, seconded by Mr. Pavoni that this resolution be adopted as read. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The uh, ordinance for uh, first reading regarding the uh, Renton Regional Fire Authority. An ordinance of the City of Renton, Washington, amending Title II commissions and boards of the Renton Municipal Code by adopting a new chapter 221 entitled Renton Regional Fire Authority and Fire Department and establishing an effective date. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Mr. Corman. Move this ordinance be placed on second final reading at the next council meeting. Second. Been moved by Mr. Corman, seconded by Mr. Pavoni that this ordinance be placed on second and final reading at the next council meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. Okay, Mr. Mayor, the uh, next ordinance is actually going to be held because the committee report was held. Okay, great. Thanks, Jason. Moving on to new business, Mr. Corman. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, just need to announce a committee of the whole meeting for next Monday, June 20th, 5.30 p.m. here in Council Chambers. We have four items on that agenda. Evergreen Treatment Services Briefing, the Neighborhood Program, King County Comprehensive Plan Briefing and Regional Issues. And that's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Prince. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Oops, excuse oh, me. Oh, we were supposed to have the um, uh, interlocal agreement for the Regional Fire Authority come back to the uh, Committee of the Whole as well on next Monday night if... Oh, that's right. If, you, if, if council has any further questions, we would be bringing that forward. Okay, I'm gonna add that as a fifth <clears throat> item. Um, the Regional Fire Authority um, agreement will come as, as item number five for next week's Committee of the Whole meeting at 5.30. Okay. Thank you, Larry. Um, Mr. Prince. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Since I took care of the two items that were in my committee, there will be no Planning Development Committee meeting this Thursday. Okay. All, Mr. That was a good move on your part. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Person. No new business. Okay. Uh, Ms. Witchie. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Mr. McIrvin. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. The uh, Utilities Committee will be meeting on Monday, June 20th at 4.30 p.m. in the Council Conference Room. There are three items on the agenda. Uh, the first is the Thunder Hills Sanitary Sewer Interceptor Replacement Project Contract. Uh, number two, Cedar River Gravel Removal Project Agreement Amendment. And the third item, Sprint Franchise Agreement. That is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Perez. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On Monday, June 20th at 3.30, the Transportation Committee will be meeting in the Council Conference Room. There are five items in the agenda. Number one is 31st Street Bridge Replacement Project. Number two, Duval Avenue Northeast Impro Improvements Project. Number three, Duval Avenue Northeast Improvement Projects as well. They are contracts. Uh, number four, Rainier Avenue South 
project, and number five, emerging issues in transportation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Pavoni. No new business, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Uh, Mr. Corman. Um, yes, Mr. Mayor. At this point, I'm going to move that the council meeting recess into executive session for approximately 45 minutes to discuss labor negotiations and potential litigation with no official action to be taken and that the council meeting be adjourned when the executive session is adjourned. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Did you give the time, uh, approximate time? Approximately 45 minutes. Yeah, 45 minutes, yep. okay. So that's a, a motion. Oh, second. second. Okay, it's been moved by Mr. Corman, seconded by Mr. Pavoni that we uh, recess into executive session for labor negotiations oh, and possible uh, litigation. Litigation. litigation for 45 minutes. The uh, meeting will be re uh, adjourned following the executive session. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it.